Jay, I spoke with former Boise State running back Gavin Reed. He was there in the late 90s. Uh, and he was there for the transition from Houston Nutt to Dirk Cutter. He was able to provide us with some early insight to see what the Coach Cutter days were like back at Boise State before he ended up kickstarting a illustrious NFL career. Like many fans who remember the good old days of the early late 90s, early 2000s BSU football, he's very excited to have Coach Cutter back on the blue. While Lyle Smith laid the foundation of a blue-collar Boise State football program, Dirk Cutter was the man who propelled the Broncos into FBS relevance when he took the reins in 1998. Kind of a no-nonsense individual, you know, kind of by the book. Gavin Reed was a running back for the Cutter-led Broncos in the late 90s. He entered the program to make changes and to, to move the program forward and to win games, which we did. So that's that's kind of when they started the, the decade of dominance is what they call it. He says as the years went on, Cutter would develop into more of a player's coach. One of the things that stood out was his ability to plan to the strengths of his personnel. He's always has a scheme. He's very goal oriented coming in with a with a couple uh, trick plays or special plays to get the playmakers the ball. He was also ready to guide the team to face any challenge. When Bart Hendricks got hurt one time and we, they wasn't sure of if he was going to play or not, they, they, they moved me over to quarterback and I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> what are we doing here? After guiding the Broncos to a pair of Big West championships, Cutter left to coach at Arizona State before jumping up to the NFL ranks. He served as the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and had two stints as the offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons. He's been through so many different scenarios in his career that it's it would be like chewing gum, walking and chewing gum at the same time. It's not gonna, he's not gonna skip a beat. Uh, I think he's gonna have a good scheme for any scenario that he he's presented. So I have complete faith that we will see a different offense uh, this, this coming next game. Cutter's high energy and expertise has already made an immediate impact on BSU's current offensive players. Uh, he's been coaching for 39, 40 years uh, at the highest level. So, you know, just having him out there, uh, he knows what he's talking about, obviously. So uh, it's just great to have his presence and his energy out there to practice with us. He cares about this place. You know, he, uh, he knows what it takes to be a Bronco. So really just uh, following his lead and whatever he has for us, we're going to execute. And for an alumnus like Reed, He's excited for the current players under Cutter to share the same experience he had over 20 years ago. I mean, he, he went to the highest level, so obviously players relate to him and understand them, and, and he understands the players' uh, weaknesses and strengths, so he's a good coach. He's offense-minded, he's, he's a good coach, which kind of hopefully balances out Avalos' uh, defense of mine. I think it'd be a good pair, and, and, and I, I'm glad, as being an alumni of, of Boise State, to have him back. And Jay, the big question right now is what kind of immediate major changes we're going to see to this offense? After all, Coach Cutter has only been the offensive coordinator for a little under a week now. But in the past, he was not afraid to make some big changes. He was the man who decided to move on from Nate Sparks and bring in Bart Hendricks. And BSU fans will remember how well that transition went. So with the, there's a lot of faith from current players and alumni alike that during this current transitional period, Coach Cutter is the man to get it done.